Welcome to Developing Palettes. This is our first collaboration or group review of a spirit. Um, I'm John, Cigar Surgeon McTavish, here as always with June Lou. June, how's it going, brother? Doing good, man. This is our very first uh, team review, video team review of a spirit. Uh, we're hoping that uh, this this will be great. I mean, we, we're definitely used to doing this within our cigar review platform. Uh, but on the spirit side of things, um, it'll be really cool to see kind of like uh, similarities uh, or contrast uh, and to really geek out and talk about this stuff. Now, I'm such a huge nerd that I hope people don't hate me for this, but I'm normally we would prep the show notes of the company and manufacturer. I'm a nerd and I know this stuff off the top of my head because I love this company so much. So the Tekatsuro 21 Pure Malt comes out of Nikka Distillery uh, out of Japan. It's a Japanese whiskey. It is a pure malt. What that means is that this is a minimum age statement of 21. However, it is not from a single distillery. It is from a blend. And this is, we'll talk about this a little bit, but it is a blended pure malt. That means that all the the whiskey that goes into this is in fact a single grain. However, it is uh, from multiple distilleries. So you and, and we'll talk about this because we've got some pictures of the box, but you have older whiskey expressions coming from other companies to combine to create a 21 year old whiskey, which is an interesting thing of its own. You really don't see that in the marketplace. It is unique. The MSRP on this is 330 ish. I would say good luck getting your hands on this for 330. Uh, we talked in our MSRP. MSRP. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, the MSRP has been going up. I think current market value, uh, a lot of retailers wouldn't sell this for anything less than four or $500 now. And it's only going up over time. I think I've I think I've nailed all the uh, manufacturer stuff. Um, we could yeah, we could do the, the vitals. Let's yeah, let's also talk a little bit our our uh, scoring system for uh, reviewing right. spirits. So yeah. our scoring um, system, we do have a video. If you've followed our cigar scoring system, uh, it should be pretty obvious. We we rate the spirits kind of in the same way that we rate our uh, beers and cigars. That is, we have uh, an appearance factor. Uh, appearance factor is how the presentation of the bottle in the boxes, how the spirit or beer looks. It is obviously not weighted to be a large portion of the score, but we feel it's an important part of the score, the overall scoring. We have aroma, which is obviously a big component of the spirit specifically. You have the flavor, obviously, and that's going to be weighted the highest. You have finish, which is very important. You have balance, and then you have an overall combined of all of those elements, how you personally felt about that entire rate. And, you know, we get a lot of flack on the cigar side of things for our scoring. I'm going to, I'm going to say what we always say, which is it's a scale from zero to 10. Zero being you're completely dissatisfied with the experience. 10 meaning you're completely satisfied with the experience. And five being you're neither satisfied nor dissatisfied. Yep. So with all that out of the way, June, <laughs> we'll walk us through your tasting experience. Yeah. Um, appearance wise, um, you know, I, I, I view appearance within spirits and beer very similar to the way I view what cigar is, is just, I don't really care. It's, it's a, uh, it, you, you, you appearance, you, you look at it through the, the lens of your eyes, uh, and it looks good or it doesn't look good. Right. Um, more so with the spirits because, the coloring will typically kind of tip you off in terms of like how much is aged perhaps, or um, if it's like bear approved or not. Uh, but in terms of this one, um, you know, it's, I, I poured it into my Glencairn, which is typically kind of like one of my go-to uh, vessels uh, that I drink out of within the, my, my whiskeys. Uh, Being in the dark amber color, um, you know, it doesn't really tip off anything in terms of like anything special. Um, you know, in terms of the actual, like, I guess, uh, maybe I could get into, like, the, the bottle look, I guess. Um, the bottle itself looks really nice. The artwork, um, the only thing that kind of sucks about it is there's a screw top off of it, which is not, typically, it's not as, like, uh, luxurious, perhaps, uh, as compared to, like, doing, like, a cork. cork. Uh, but um, it's okay. I care more about drinking it. <laughs> What about you? So for me, I rated the appearance, I think, higher than you. I think I think I agree with you on the in the terms of the spirit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh missed the mute button there. That's my bad. 
So I think if you're rating the the way the spirit itself looks, I think it would just just be a good rating for me. Like there's nothing that I look at the color and I go, yeah, it's kind of a like a rose gold amber. It, it's all right. It, I mean, it's not that like I get pretty excited when I see a deep red, deep sherry. It doesn't really blow me away, but I think the packaging itself is very elegant. You look at the bottle, it's got a screw top. Unfortunately, or fortunately, that's how all Japanese whiskey, to my knowledge, except for maybe the smaller bottles of, um, of Nikka stuff, comes in a screw top almost universally across the, the range. I don't think that's a big deal. I think that corks have been romanticized i kind of like the idea of a screw top i like the security of a screw top it doesn't really factor into my score but i can tell you if you look at the the box the actual box that the bottle comes in it is one of the most elegant packages i've ever seen it's got the story of the founder masataka takatsuru if you don't know about masataka takatsuru i'm not going to talk for an hour about him because i could he's essentially the founder of What Japanese whiskey is today is thankful to Masataka Takatsuro. He brought Scottish style Japanese whiskey or Scottish style whiskey manufacturing to Japan. Uh, So it's got his story on one side. It's got a story of his wife, Rita, on the other. She's Scottish. He married her, fell in love with her. Uh, And then it's got the, you know, we talked briefly at the the top of the review about the recipe that goes into it. I'm not going to read it. I, mean, I think we've got a picture of it, but it's got a, a breakdown of, you know, what the combination of whiskeys are that go into that. They're very open about this information, whereas this information is not necessarily readily shared in other industries. So I, I rated the packaging very good. Um, walk us through your, your taste flavor experience. Sure. Um, so flavor accounting for 45% uh, of our total score, which is the line share. So, uh, very important. Um, I, I got within the flavors. I got uh, espresso beans, uh, dark chocolate, um, a, a little bittery oak. Um, and then you get a little bit. You know, as, as you take more sips, um, I get some dried orange peels, uh, a really soft black pepper spice that comes through. Uh, in terms of, sorry, I should talk about the dose first. This is why this is our pilot episode. <laughs> Um, in terms of the aroma, um, I rated it to be very good. Uh, so I rated flavor to be very good too. So, you know, the only thing that's better than that within our category of flavors or, or just rating system is our amazing score, which is perfection. So very good is very good. <laughs> um, aroma is awesome. Um, it's a very inviting nose, uh, yet it's complex, nuanced, very balanced, uh, a lot of rich oak. I get like a huge amount of uh, sweet, uh, like ripe prunes going. Um, dark chocolate is very prevalent. A uh, little light soy sauce, a little bit of a minerality to it. Um, in terms of balance, um, so I thought the balance is amazing. Um, you know, all the flavors on the nose and palate, perfectly balanced. Uh, there's absolutely zero obstruction from the the, the proof and the ABV. Um and I, I'll also say within the proof that's within this bottling, uh, I think it's perfect uh, to deliver the flavor and aromas from the from the whiskey. What about you? Yeah, talking about the aroma. So I, I actually rated the aroma because I'm a you know I'm a hard score when it comes to spirits. Probably harder on spirits than I am on cigars. Uh, I thought the nose was good. It had some interesting melon notes, uh, like a like a bright fruit uh, bubble gum, which was unusual for me. I don't get bubble gum on a lot of spirits. Uh, that orangey citrus you're talking about, uh, almost like an orange rind. I definitely got that on the nose. Mm. Got some element of banana, which was cool, and uh, some baking spices. Now I couldn't identify the baking spices as well as you did, but they're definitely there and they're they're rich. I think part of the reason I rated the nose as good, and this is kind of you know we'll talk about in our overall, but that's kind of the element of Japanese whiskeys that's not always bold and in your face. In fact, most of the time it's not. It's very mm. subtle and nuanced. So for me. It's a nuanced nose, and I it just didn't rise to that very good because I'm a big jerk, and that's how I rate hard. But in terms of the flavor, I rate it as very good. Uh, you know, the word I kept using is decadent. It just it's just everything that I love in Japanese mm. whiskey: sweet candy, mild spices. That had an interesting sort of sea saltiness at the end of each sip. Maybe some seaweed, some smoke. Um, there was a, a vegetal clover honeysuckle kind of 
note that kind of resided through the middle, connecting everything together. And then my palate, my palate kind of acclimated to the flavors because it is very complex and it does take a while for your brain and your palate to work through it. The citrus was there and then it became this really nice orange rind. I mean, it's, it's everything, it's everything you want. Um, in terms of uh, balance, I rated the balance is very good. Uh, I thought everything harmonized really, really well. Uh, the strength of it is good. It's just kind of under medium intensity, which is surprising. We talk about all the flavors that are going on here. Nothing really blows your palate out. Nothing, um, is really sharp or intense. Um, the finish I rated is good. I, I thought it was, uh, decent. It had a really nice, like they said, that seaweed saltiness. Um, then I think after that saltiness, cause the saltiness was a little taking over the finish. And once the saltiness went away, the delayed bike bacon spices kind of came through for me. And then I would say there was this interesting drawing aspect to sort of close out that experience. And it came across as like an aged oak. And it's interesting because it has, you know, 20 year old whiskey is, a, that's a long time to spend in any kind of wood. I was expecting more of an oak flavor overall influencing the palate. And it really only came through at the finish stage for me as, uh, as oak. So I'm glad it didn't overwhelm the palate. You have any other comments there? Yeah, um, can we talk about the finish yet? I I talked a little bit about the finish. Yeah. yeah oh, that was my what bad. I, was just talking I didn't about. talk about the finish. You zoned Son out. Of a bitch. Yeah, I, dude, I. We'll get to a better okay. flow at some point. Okay, in our so lives. I just talked about the balance and the finish. Mm, okay, so finish for me, I I rated the same as you. Um, <clears throat> nice like oiliness. Um, you know, light smoke, rich oak, coffee beans, um, and it's very long and lingering. I mean, I, I really love uh, the the part that I probably love about most Japanese whiskey is how inviting it is on the palate and and how much of a lingering finish it is. Um, I I think that it, it's it's like if I were to kind of do the cigar equivalent, it's like. That's one of the ways that I why I love like perhaps most Cuban cigars mm. that are in Humadoro, non limited regular production Cuban cigars. And I probably throw in like Connecticut Shade wrapped right. cigars as well. Uh you always know that's gonna be inviting. It's not gonna topple over the head with like like nicotine, uh and or like in, within spirits like A B V, like proof wise. Um, I really enjoy that about Japanese whiskey. Uh and which is why I always like on any given day, I could enjoy a dram of it. So overall, June, how would you describe your experience? I thought it was excellent. Um, I rated it very good. Um, you know, I, I think about all the facets of my tasting, you know, the aroma palette, finish, balance. Um, it was very harmonious. Um, really dug that oily aspect uh, of, of that leaves it on the palate. Um, it's actually just like cigars. I love within whiskeys when it leaves like a oily uh, aftertaste to it, right? And, and it's it's like when that happens, um, it makes you want to drink more of it, right? Like it makes you eager to take another sip. Um, but whereas contrast that by if it was like a really drying, uh, if it was really drying on the palate, like it's it's – it's almost like you don't really want to care to like drink more of it. Uh, and with cigars, I, if, if it dries my palate, you just want to drink water all yep. the time, right? You kind of lose focus on the flavor delivery. So I really enjoy that aspect of it. Um, you know, lower proof, 86 proof, uh, but it's amazing how much fullness of flavors there were, I felt like, even at the lower 86 proof. Um, and, um, you know, yeah, I, I loved it. I, I have another couple of bottles of these, and I'm really happy to have it. Um, it's, but man, the MSRP is it's high. Crazy. Like it's, it's the, the value proposition of Japanese whiskeys for the most part. It's just not going to be there, unless if you're talking about the NAS versions of that stuff that's out there, like the Yochi and and, and all that. Um, I don't know. I, I think. One of the reasons why I didn't think that it was an amazing overall experience is it's inhibit it's it's uh it's the price is a factor to it, right? It's a limitation to it. Um but at the same rate, that's great because it just shows you how much this stuff is great and the demand is high for it. Um and, and I'm and I'm happy for Nika, uh, because certainly in the beginning for a few years, I'm sure, uh for many, many years, um 
there was not this hype. You know, it was hard for them to get this stuff out of the door. Yeah, I rated the overall experience as good. And only, and again, you know, it sounds silly because I have two bottles of this and I went on and on and on about it. But for me, it was when I struggle with, is this very good or is this just good? That to me is the definition of it's going to fall in the lower category, not the upper category. So I think it's, I think it's very elegant. I think it's very nuanced. It's rich and tense. I, I love it. I think for a 21 year old whiskey, it's one of the better 21 year old whiskeys in the marketplace uh, because the profile hasn't faded. And I think one of the things that people may not understand if they haven't had the, the benefit of trying older whiskeys, a lot of older whiskeys can, can lose flavor very, very quickly. And I've had a lot of older whiskey that was extremely flat and very disappointing. And that's sad because eventually it is going to age out in the barrel. And so the trick is to make sure that you bring it out before that happens. So like I said, at the top, this whiskey for me showcases a lot of what the profile of Japanese whiskey is in, in all the best ways. Um, I think what fell short for me is ironically, the thing that Japanese whiskey does well is their nuance. And I think for me, to move that into a very good category overall, it would have to be more intense. And it's, again, it's ironic because mm. if it's very more intense, it's not really Japanese whiskey. So for me, as, as an overall spirit in whiskey category, it's going to be tough for a Japanese whiskey to get into that very good category. So getting into the scores, uh, I gave it a 7.67. Seven. You gave it an 8.25. That's uh, pretty high scores in our, in our rating system. Uh, how does an 8.25 Rate, uh, rate to your experience it rates very well um it's right on it's 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 at the i mean anything that's like eight and over i would say uh it's probably pretty close to like being at that elite level of within the entire scope of my collection and what i've tasted in japanese whiskeys um is really high up there um you know, uh, a special shout out to um, flavor and overall, which is which is comprised of like like sixty five percent of our total score. Um, I rated both of them to be very good, so that automatically really gets it to like that elite high level. Um, yeah, man, I I I, uh, I, can, I have half a bottle. I could I could easily drink half a bottle right now, but for the sake of uh, you know, try to enjoy a little bit at a time. I'm not going to, so. Yeah, 767 for me rates very close to where I thought it would be in my head. I think, uh, as I mentioned already, the reasons why it didn't score higher. I think if the aromas had been higher and or the finish had been higher, I think it would have been a no-brainer eight. Uh, you know, which is to say if you're rating this within the Japanese whiskey as a, as a sub-compartment of the whiskey or spirit section, I think to me, this is definitely a mid to low eights within Japanese whiskey. It's, it's very, very, it's going to be very, very hard within Japanese whiskey to top this experience. I know that there are Japanese whiskeys out there that do top this, but for a consumer, it's going to be very, very difficult. So I think this will probably end up sitting at the high end of Japanese whiskey rating reviews for us, I think for quite some time. Any other final thoughts? Yeah, I, I wanted to touch a little bit more about your sentiments about, um, if it was higher, you basically you're basically saying you want cast strength version of Japanese yeah, whiskey, yeah. right? I think I think that's what's um, missing. I agree. Me. Yeah, yeah. I and but if you are getting to that level, you basically have to look at I don't know maybe like Karuizawa stuff, distillery stuff, where you know they have really good cast strength expressions. But then again, you're gonna pay up the ass, man. Like you're paying like fifteen hundred. Did I mention that I have a Scotch Malt Whiskey Society Karuizawa? expression in my collection that i should probably do a review of in the near future oh it nice. i mean that to me that might be i mean i haven't rated it yet but that might that might be the best japanese whiskey i've ever had it's so i can't even describe to you how intense and how amazing it is both a combination of intense flavors and nuance i don't remember what the abv is i think it's 62 percent um and I had to basically enter a lottery to get the chance to buy it. And I happened to win the lottery. Uh, it is truly one of the most phenomenal bottles of whiskey I've ever had. And I'm sure that I will do a review of it in the near future for sure. Yeah. I, uh, I have a bottle that I have not opened. It was a, I also have a bottle. Karuizawa is a vintage 
99 to 2000 cast strength. Um, my brother-in-law bought this for me wow. about like three or four years ago. Uh, and I think back when he bought it, he said it was about, I think he said it was either $1,300 or $1,400. Um, I've not had the heart to crack it yet. I will at some point. I'm well, going to sell it. Uh, so just in case you're you guys gonna are cr- You're going to crap your pants when you hear this. But when I bought this back, and this is a lot of years ago, I think it was sub five hundred dollars. Oh man! So Jeez. that was a that was a no brainer for me. Uh, I don't know what the bottle yeah. will be worth today, but I'm sure it's it's probably somewhere in the fifteen hundred to two two grand range. But you know, we've talked about it. I'm not a flipper. Yeah. I'm not going to flip it. I'm have it to drink it. Uh, I'm going to continue to drink it. It's phenomenal, and you know, I think I think I brought man. some for you. The last IPCPR when we did our big tasting thing, I think I brought some, mm. but you know, we'll figure it out. I would have remember that. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure. No, no offense. You brought me some really amazing stuff, but maybe I uh, maybe I skipped that one. I should. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Maybe you're like, oh, oh this is for myself. All right. Well, <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks very much for tuning into our first inaugural whiskey tasting group review uh, you can check out all of our content at developingpalettes.com make sure to subscribe check out our youtube channel and we'll be back next time with another group review